in the Mindanao Bus Company case, yung transportation company case I was referring to a while ago, sabi ng Supreme Court doon, the industry is not carried on in this building where the repair shop is located. The transportation business carried on outside, not here. So that was another reason why the court said the equipment, the repair equipment there should not be considered as immobilized but remained personal property. Can the parties agree that a certain machinery which has been installed by the owner of the tenement for an industry or works which will be carried on in that building and which tend to meet directly the needs of those industry or works? Can the owner of that machinery and a creditor agree to treat this machinery as personal property, subject them to a chattel mortgage? Is that allowable? The answer is yes. In other words, again, the principle of estoppel would apply. Although the machinery inside the building were installed by the owner and they, think they tend to meet directly the needs of an industry or work, which can be carried on in that building. If the parties agree to treat the machinery as chattel and enter into a chattel mortgage, neither of them will be permitted to question the validity of the chattel mortgage later on on the ground that the subject was actually real property. Next point. In number 6 of Article 415, the law deals with animal houses, pigeon houses, fish ponds, and other breeding places of a similar nature in case their owner has placed them or preserves them with the intention to have them permanently attached to the land. The animals in these places are included. So, if there is a pigeon house permanently attached to the land, the pigeons in that pigeon house are also considered real property. Of course, pigeons uh, sometimes fly around. Or in the case of fish ponds, if you happen to have bangus, in the fish pond, the bangus are also considered as real property, immovable, even if they are swimming around. For purposes of sale, however, this should be considered as movable property. So if you enter into a contract of sale of the bangus in your fish pond, that's not a sale of real property. That should be considered, of course, obviously as a sale of personal property or if you donate the bangus to a certain individual that should not be considered a donation of real property but a donation of personal property of course if you consider it a donation of real property you would even need to execute a public document both for the donation and the acceptance all right fertilizers actually used on a piece of land what about insecticides same rule should apply and then you have mines, quarries, slug dumps, well, the matter the rock forms part of the bed, and waters either running or stagnant. The waters referred to here are yung natural waters. So if you have several drums of water, which you keep in your yard, because in some areas, water is getting a bit scarce, the waters in those drums, which you had earlier collected, cannot be considered as covered by number 8 of Article 415. Ang mga waters dito either running or stagnant. Kasi sinasabi dyan, yung mga waters in rivers, for example, in lakes or in lagoons. Yan, natural waters. Number 9, ducks and structures, which although floating are intended by their nature and object to remain at a fixed place on a river, lake, or port. A question has already been asked regarding this. There was a barge which was at the fixed place, basta nasa fixed place, consider it as real property, even if it's floating. For example, Napocor and some other uh, private companies have these power barges which supply electricity to certain island provinces. So itong power barges na ito, they are usually docked along the shore or along a port and they, they remain there for a considerable period of time they are considered as real property. Uh, yung floating restaurant, yan sa may reclamation area, it's floating, but it remains at a fixed place, that should be considered as real property. But of course, if it's actually a boat which take on passengers and then go on a cruise of Manila Bay and 
while uh, cruising around Manila Bay, dinner reserve, I don't think you can consider that as real. That will be movable property. All right. And then lastly, you have contracts for public works and servitudes and other real rights over real property. So please remember the enumeration of real property under Article 415. Then you take a look at what are in turn considered as movable property under Article 416 and 417 of the Civil Code. I just want to call your attention. Certain real property are by special provision of law also considered as movable property. Very good example would be growing crops. Growing crops are considered under certain provisions of law as movable property under the chattel mortgage law as well as under the civil code provisions on sales. They are considered personal property. Sabi nga, in the case of growing crops, while they are still there growing on the soil, sabi ng, I think, what's the Supreme Court which said in Sibal versus Valdez, it's a mobilization by anticipation. In other words, the law already anticipates they're subsequently becoming movable. When would that happen? When they're actually gathered. So even before they're gathered, there is mobilization by anticipation. That's why they can be the subject of a chattel mortgage. All right. Forces of nature, which are brought under control by science. Uh, nuclear power, uh, wind power, electricity. Okay, These are considered movable property. Shares of stock in any corporation. As long as you're talking about shares of stock, these are considered personal property. Regardless of the fact that the corporations in which the shares are held has real property. Or even if all of the assets of the corporation consists of real property. The shares of stock in that corporation would always be considered as personal property. The next important classification, of course, is the classification between property of public dominion and property of private ownership. Remember Article 420. What are considered property of public dominion? Those intended for public use. Then those intended for public service or for the development of national wealth. Property intended for public use, roads, streets, parks. A property is considered, according to the court, for public use within the meaning of the civil code if it is open indiscriminately to the public. In other words, anyone can go there and use it, like our streets. Anyone can use our streets. It's open indiscriminately to everyone. That's property for public use. Property of public dominion are subject to certain special rules. That's another important thing we have to remember in connection with these properties. They cannot be made the subject matter of contracts. They cannot be sold, they cannot be leased, or otherwise made the subject of contracts. They cannot be acquired by prescription. They cannot be attached and sold at public auction to satisfy any judgment. They cannot even be burdened with an easement. You cannot even register them. You cannot have them titled in your name under the torrent system. And if a title is issued covering property public dominion, that's not a valid title. The government has property of two types, property of public dominion and patrimonial property. With respect to the patrimonial property, just like any other properties, just like ordinary private property, that can be the subject of contracts. Property of public dominion, as long as it remains such, is subject to the special rules we just mentioned. Cannot be subject matter of contracts, cannot be acquired by prescription, cannot be burdened with dispatch, etc. Is it possible to convert properties of public dominion to patrimonial property? The answer, of course, is yes, it is possible. How can that be done? Will the mere fact that property of public dominion is no longer actually being used for public use or is no longer actually being devoted to some public service, will that automatically convert the property into patrimonial property? The answer is no, it will not. In the case of national government property, 
there must be a formal declaration by the executive or legislative of such conversion. Otherwise, the property remains property of public dominion. With respect to property of political subdivisions, the conversion must, of course, be authorized by law. A very good example would be the uh, Ropongi cases involving the property of the Philippines located in Japan, which were given to us by way of uh, reparation by the Japanese as part of the reparations agreement. Those properties were originally intended for the use of our embassy. They were never used for that purpose. After a long period of time, there was an attempt to sell these properties. The Supreme Court said, the mere fact that these properties in Japan have not been actually used for their original purpose, which was supposed to be for embassy use, does not automatically convert these properties into patrimonial property. They remain part of the public domain and consequently not available for private appropriation or ownership until there is a formal declaration on the part of the government to withdraw it from being such. Abandonment, according to the court, cannot be inferred. An abandonment must be definite. On the part of local government entities, just like the state, their properties are again subdivided into properties for public use and patrimonial property. Again, for property to be considered for public use, it must be open indiscriminately to the public. Otherwise, it cannot be said to be property for public use. In some cases, however, the Supreme Court, in determining whether properties of a local government unit should be considered as public or patrimonial, in some cases, the Supreme Court has instead opted to apply the special laws governing municipal corporations. Thus, in the case of Sambuanga, Del Norte versus City of Sambuanga, the Supreme Court said, we cannot possibly decide this case strictly along the lines and parameters set by the civil code in determining what properties are public use and what are private property. This involved the creation of a new local government carved out of a former political unit. In that case, and in similar cases involving local governments, the Supreme Court instead considered the use of the property, whether it is for governmental purposes or not. As long as the property was used for governmental purposes, it was considered property for public use or public property. Still on this point, in the absence of clear evidence as to the source of the funds used in acquiring the property, which is currently being held by a local government unit, the presumption is that the property came from the state. Salas versus Arencio and some other cases. So, if a local government unit is currently holding property, but there is no clear showing as to the source of the funds used to acquire that property, or as to how it acquired that property, the presumption is that that property, that land, actually came from the state, and the local government unit is holding it merely in trust for the state for the benefit of the inhabitants of the locality. If that is so, those properties, of course, cannot be considered as patrimonial property. They will be considered public property and the national legislature will be considered to have absolute control over these properties. In some cases decided by the Supreme Court, it has been made clear that local government units cannot enter into contracts, cannot even validly authorize by means of an ordinance, the awarding of contracts over certain streets in favor of private individuals for purposes of having a flea market there. As long as the street remains a street, it's for public use, and therefore it is beyond the power of the local government unit to deal with by means of contracts. In one case, a local government unit authorized 
that a certain street in the area be converted into a flea market. There was an ordinance authorizing that. The court said that cannot be. What is quite clear from these cases is that while even under the local government code, local government units are allowed to withdraw certain streets when no longer necessary, withdraw from public use, they cannot, in a manner of speaking, have their cake and eat it too. In other words, without actually withdrawing the road from public use, they will still maintain it as a street and at the same time operate it as a flea market. That cannot be done. So in these cases decided by the Supreme Court, Sabine Court, they put it As long as they have not been withdrawn from public use, they remain property for public use. And you can at the same time enter into contracts with private individuals who intend to operate a flea market in that road. Kailangan kung gusto nyo withdraw, i-withdraw nyo. In other words, that street will cease to be a street. It will no longer be a street. Only after that, can you deal with it as patrimonial property? But not while it is still a street. You recall the uh, ruling of the Supreme Court in Chavez versus Peya. Of course, you know very well what this is all about. There was this agreement between the Public Estates Authority and the Amari. Amari would reclaim areas of uh, Manila Bay and as payment, it will be paid with uh, reclaimed lands. So, you remember the ruling of the Supreme Court in this case? Maliwanag na maliwanag, sabi ng Supreme Court. With respect to the reclaimed lands on Freedom Island, around uh, 157 hectares, which are covered by titles in the name of the Public Estates Authority, they are alienable lands of the public domain. But they may only be leased, not sold to private corporations. Of course, they may be sold to Filipino citizens. With respect to the submerged areas, they are inalienable and outside the commerce of men. Only after PEA has reclaimed them, may the government reclassify them as alienable and disposable lands, if no longer needed for public service. The transfer of the submerged lands to Amari is also void since the Constitution prohibits alienation of our natural resources other than agricultural land of the public domain. So remember the important points of the main decision. All right.